Hello everyone, my name is Terry Candlestick and welcome back to the channel. I know it's been quite a while since I did an intro like this for Echo, but I wanted to let you know I'm going to change up the record and editing style of these videos just so we can help uh, get them out. So, there won't be any long, long periods between uh, Echo videos. We're finally going to go rolling right ahead. So we're picking up from this and whatever little mistakes I make, I guess I'll have them. Until then, carry on. I'm in a dark room, very dark. The only source of light coming from what looks like a candle on a bedside table. A large bed sits next to it. I'm laying near the foot of this bed, and, opposite me, I can barely make out a wall next to which is a wooden box. Help! Raven's plaintive moan forces me to my feet. As I drag my right foot up to stand underneath, under me, a blinding pain flashes up my leg, sending bright white... I guess I mean... Then sending bright light, bright white light across my vision. I let out a muffled scream of pain behind my clenched teeth, closing my eyes as I wait for it to, to subside. Memories are starting to flow back to me. There's a doorway in front of me, and I start to make my way towards it, hopping slowly on my left foot, holding the right off the ground. I come into a small hallway, one that branches to my left into a corridor of darkness. Right in front of me, however, is a set of stairs. Light glows at the bottom, and I'm pretty sure that's where Raven's voice is coming from. In fact, I'm pretty sure I can hear other voices coming from there as well. I'm looking down at my ankle, wincing as I see that it's gotten even bigger, more than twice its original size. I'm starting to think that it's more than a sprain. As I make my way down the stairs, cringing with every little hop, my stomach starts to st my stomach starts to sink. I remember now the weird mansion that we were just in, the doors and hallways, and the smoke monster. The door we just went through. Whatever's happening to us isn't over yet. When I reach the bottom of the stairs, I find Jenna and Carl standing around a tall, brown wardrobe. Wardrobe. As I stand there, breathing heavily, Carl turns to see me. Chase! He immediately rushes to my side, his hooves clopping loudly against the wooden floor. I think he's simply coming over to support me, but he wraps me up in a hug. God! I keep worrying that one of us is gonna disappear. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm fine. I, I was upstairs in a bedroom, I think. The anxiety I'm feeling over the whole situation go, goes away just a little, absorbed into the soft warmth of Carl's body. Over Carl's shoulder, I can see Jenna watching us, her eyes narrowed, expression dark. I'm about to ask what's on her mind when I hear a loud bang from inside the wardrobe. Guys? Are you still there? I think I... I think something touched me! Jenna turns back to the wardrobe, silent for a moment, then bends down to look at something. I hear a metallic click, click. I hear a metallic click. Then Jenna jumps back as one of the doors swing open and a black and white blur flower falls out like a rock. Raven face plants neatly into the wooden floor. He stays there for a moment, moaning into the planks before Jenna bends over to help him up. Are you alright? Oh, yeah. I just... 
I just felt like something grabbed me. I look back up into the wardrobe to find a very bare and empty wooden compartment. I'm inclined to believe him, though, after everything that's happened. Where, where are we? It's a good question. And now with the excitement over, I take the opportunity to look around as well. Everything is wooden. The walls, floor, ceiling. There's a large rug on the floor covered in colorful patterns and shapes. It reminds me of the art projects we do in elementary school when learning about the natives. There's a big stone fireplace and two rug-covered chairs in front of it. Jenna gingerly shuts the wardrobe. So, a log cabin. Does everyone remember where we were before? Yeah, that mansion place. So, we're still stuck in this dimension thing, then? I sigh, rubbing my face with one hand while I lean against Carl with the other. I had long ago given up on trying to figure out exactly what the hell is going on. Like Carl said earlier, we just have to keep moving and hope we get out of here. What's that sound? The drumming that I had thought was coming from within my head started has started up again. Drums? The husky moves towards the wall, which consists of several logs stacked horizontally on top of each other. I can't see anything. The cracks are filled in with stuff. I look around again, this time more carefully. Right in front of me is a large log door, not unlike the one we initially came through. On my left side, separated by the stairs, is what looks like the kitchen side of the room. In it, there's a small table with two chairs on either side. There's also a big black wooden f stove. There's also a big black wood-burning stove next to a few shelves, which are full of pots and pans. Various tools and furniture clutter up the rooms. And there's a window. I pointed out to Carl. Look, let's try and see you out through there. Carl pulls me into the familiar position on his back before clopping over to the window. The sound's a bit louder with my added weight. Jenna and Raven follow behind. There's a ledge next to the window, thankfully, and Carl lets me sit on it. I turn to look out the window while the others crowd around me, resting their hands on the wooden bench. The first thing I notice is a flickering light in the distance, about a hundred yards away. It casts out across the ground around it. Shadows from rocks and bushes dance about with the movement of the illumination. It's definitely a fire. A large one, probably a bonfire. The blackness around the fire is unnatural, though, just like what I saw through the windows in the mansion. It's inky and thick, and has the oppressive air of almost being alive. No other light comes from what I presume to be the sky, that fire being the only signal that anything exists outside the cabin. A fire? Raven says redundantly. The drumming, it's, it's coming from it. Carl reaches out, but his hands look to immediately press against something. I reach out too and feel a solid flat surface where a pane of glass might be set up, but it's clear there's nothing visible there. Observe, accept, move on. Hey, look! I look up in time to see something dark flash across the fire. It, it, it disappears into the darkness to the right of the flame, though. What was that? Maybe it was a... a... 
tumbleweed or something? No, it was jumping, whatever it was. I feel a prickling upon my neck, and now I'm not real, really into the idea of just staring out into the darkness. But then it happens again, and I see what Jen is saying. The dark shape st starts at the left side of the fire before passing in front of it. I get a brief impression of a tail and ears, legs and arms pumping as if jogging in place. It moves past the flames, then disappears into the darkness again. Something's out there. We continue to watch, but the drumbeat dies down again, and after a minute, it's clear nothing's moving around out there anymore. What was that? Well, uh... Carl, Jan Carl glances at Jenna. The drumbeat sounds kind of native, don't you think? He's clearly waiting for Jenna to confirm. Maybe. There's an awkward silence before Carl coughs. <laughs> Let's think. We weren't able to get out of the mansion until we found that letter, right? He looks at me. Yeah. I respond automatically. Well, if that's the case, then maybe we have to find something in here, right? I guess that would make sense. But what are we supposed to find? Another letter? Yeah, didn't... Didn't someone tell you about finding something? That it would open the door? Yeah, and I think it makes sense that... Whoever set this up would do it in the same way, right? I sigh and stop staring out the window. My back sore from the twisting motion. I sit straight up on the bench and look back into the cabin. Well, if we're supposed to find another letter, there's a bunch of places to hide it. Maybe we should try the door first. Jenna walks over to the door and and looks it up and down before reaching to, reaching out to slide back a rusty bolt. To my surprise, it moves with only a little resistance. Uh, are we sure we want to go running out? I mean, we don't know who that is running around. Jenna hesitates, then heaves the door, heaves back on the door, but it doesn't bulge, not even an inch. Jenna sighs. Raven bounds up next to Jenna before enthusiastically yanking back on the handle as well. Again, the door holds fast. Of course. Jenna stares at the door a moment before turning to us. Let's take a look around upstairs. If we're supposed to find something, then we should start from top to bottom. Ah, great! Carl bends down to pick me up, but I rest a paw on his shoulder. Wait, I don't want you to have to drag me everywhere, let alone up and down the stairs. He stops mid-stoop, his face level with mine as he looks at me. You sure? I don't really want to leave you alone down here. As I look back at him, I can't help but note the differences that I'd noticed earlier. His face has harder lines, his fur duller, his eyes somehow deeper. Wiser? You alright? I break out of my trance and blink. Y yeah yeah I'll just stay down here and look around where I can. Jen and Raven are already making their way up the stairs. Raven going on about how his family used to have their own log cabin. Alright. But shout if, uh, you need anything. I smile. At least I feel like some parts of Carl are still familiar. After the ram heads upstairs, I lean back on my little bench, letting my head tilt back as I close my eyes. Even in this new environment, everything is still feeling surreal. I've come to welcome the feeling, though. 
it's a nice little barrier to everything's that everything that's happening right now. In some ways, I can still pretend that this is all a dream. Hell, even now I'm thinking it's a dream. That I'm somehow stuck in one of my paralysises. Maybe I'm in a hospital right now, and they're trying to figure out how to pull me out of it. That thought has me feeling like I'm being watched and the fur prickles around my neck. Guess it would be kind of awkward if all of those doctors were watching me right now. Maybe Carl and Jenna are there too. And Leo. And Flynn. And TJ. The feeling gets stronger, so I turn my back around to look out the window. It's still silent, and the lonely little flame in the distance continues to flicker around the rocks and sagebrush. It makes me wonder how endless this world is. If we're in some type of ghost dimension being manipulated by whatever... by what are basically ghost gods, then the then will this whole ordeal be never-ending? The thought twists my stomach, so I stop thinking about it. I turn back around and, my, and for, force my eyes to start scanning the kitchen from top to bottom, looking for something, anything, that might stand out. I'll assume I'm looking for a letter, but then again, if the rules are limitless in this world, then there's no telling what I might... It might be that we're supposed to find next. I think about vocally asking James or whoever the hell it is for some help. Maybe some kind of hint at least, but there's no way I'm going to do that without the others with me. Thinking about pushing off the bench to start limping around the kitchen when the small scratching sound catches my attention. I hold still, then lean back, tilting my ear towards the sound. It's muffled and a bit distant, but it's coming from directly to my left. Is it happening on the outside of the cabin? My fur prickles, and I think about calling Carl. But I can hear the three of them stomping around, talking to each other in muffled voices from upstairs. I turn around again, this time a little more tentatively. The dancing bonfire continues to glow quietly. No other movement from... No other movement aside from the shadows. This time, a wrestling count wrestling sound comes from that same direction, from that same spot, and I instinctively turn my eyes in its direction. Carl? I raise my voice only a little bit, but their conversation carries on upstairs as if I hadn't said anything. I look up at the ceiling, then back out the window. The wrestling sound continues, this time in earnest, as if something's twisting around the brush. It's coming from just out of view of the window, right at the base of the house. I hold my breath and lean forward, stretching my neck up to get a better angle and peer down into the darkness. It's really too dark to see much, or at least that's what I was thinking. Almost as if it has it has its own glow, a bright white face stares back at me from the blackness. My mind blanks and my body seizes up. And just like that, I'm in a paralysis. Forced to stare down at the white face, the black eyes. As if the thing is holding me with its gaze. It, it's as if the thing is holding me with its gaze. But as it does, its features become more definable. I see tall ears, a long, pointy muzzle, a band of some type across the thing's forehead. Stop. It. Something says it very deliberately through their teeth, right in my ear. At the same time, the face flickers and 
buzzes like a TV picture with bad reception. The head twitches and shifts, then the muzzle opens and... The cackle that comes forth is all at once terrifying and familiar, and at that moment, I'm released. My vocal cords start working at the same time I let out a scream as I fall back. I land on the wooden floor with a loud thud that shakes the pots and pans on the shelves. The room spins and I feel like I'm coming right out of a dream, like I've been sleeping for ages. The next thing I know is that I'm surrounded by the three faces of my friends, all looking down at me. Carl grabs me under the arms and pulls me into a sitting position, his face worried, and there's something else, too. Anger? What happened? I'm startled by his abruptness, and I stammer through my answer. I, 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 it was a, a, a face, uh, out the window. What did it say? Carl, what are you doing? Raven reproaches the ram gently, his ears falling. Carl glances at the husky, then at Jenna, who's been silent so far. Then back at me, slowly letting go. Sir, sorry. I was just worried about you. What did you see? Did it say anything? It takes me a moment to find my voice. Uh, no, no, it didn't say anything. Just laughed. What did it look like? Uh... A fox, maybe. Had a headband over his head. Carl's eyes narrow. Hey, I found something. We all look up at Raven as he holds up a white piece of paper. What is that? Carl stands up, staring hard at the paper in Raven's hand. I don't know. Looks like a photocopy of the newspaper. Let's see. Carl turns towards the can candle setting, sitting on the desk. Jenna stands behind him. Must set the boy missing after. Whoa! Raven flinches back as the paper catches fire, illuminating the entire cabin room. Our shadows dance across the wood, the log walls. The paper, which Raven had dropped, flutters to the floor, and a tongue of angry flame eating it up completely before it hits the floor. We all stare at the smoldering flake of ash on the ground. Raven, are you kidding me? Why, I wasn't even that close to the candle. That might have been what we needed. But I... Raven stares at his hands, looking forlornly between them and the candle which seems to flicker innocently on the table. I rest my face in my hands. Well, what do we do He wasn't near the candle. I pull my head out of my hands, not because of what Jenna said, but because of the way she said it. Huh? I've got a side angle here. You are at least two feet away. There's a brief silence. Jenna, what are you talking about? I don't know, Carl. What am I talking about? Jenna turns to the ram, eyes narrowed, teeth just barely bared. Teeth just slightly bared. I look at Carl. He's frowning, a concerned look on his face. Jenna, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm saying there... I'm saying there's no way that candle burned that paper. Carl's concerned expression deepens, but there's also a hint of condensation there. That's not how you say that. Condescension there. Carl's expression... Carl's concerned expression deepens, but there's also a hint of condescension there. What else could have done it, Jenna? This time, the silence is heavy. I'm baffled by the interactions 
they've been having so far, and, judging by the look on Raven Sully's face, so is he. Hey, guys, I'm sorry I burned it, but maybe we can figure out from the title, uh, mess that the boy missing. I look at Jenna. Oh yeah, Meseta. Isn't that... That your tribe, or... Yep. I feel my face flush as I wonder if I'm being insensitive. Like I think she knows everyone from the tribe. But what does that mean? A lot of people go missing out here. Well... It would have something to do with James, right? How do we know that? I look at Carl. Are you okay, man? You've been acting really weird ever since we got here. I think we're all acting a little different after getting here, don't you think? Carl glances at Jenna. Are we fighting again? Staring at the ash on the ground, something I should have realized earlier suddenly hits me. Wait a minute. That newspaper. It kind of looked like something that came out of the crawl space tubs. What do you mean? I was looking through some artifacts that Carl's family saved from way back when, for that project I was doing. It seems like it was years ago at this point. I snapped my fingers. And some of the stuff was missing from it. Like pages ripped out from Carl's mom's notebooks. Notes. That had photocopies of old newspapers. So... So, was that just a clipping from the notes? Maybe. I don't know. But John was native. So, maybe it has to do with him. I think back to the small fox I saw through the window. The band across its forehead. Was that John? So, the ghost just ripped the pages to show you th in this nightmare. So, the ghost just ripped out the pages to show you in this nightmare world? Why didn't he just point them out to you in the real world? I don't really have an answer for that. Then, we wouldn't have to be going through this shit right now. Ghost rules? Or even shrugs. And what if that was our key out of here? Well, we can't just... Well, they can't just leave us here. Right? We don't know anything about where we are or what these things are capable of. So what now? Just sit around and wait for something else to happen? Carl suddenly sighs. Well, I'm going to look around some more. You guys do whatever you want. Again, I'm taken aback by Carl's demeanor. I've never seen him act like this before. It's like he's a different person. Without another, world, without another word, he turns on his hoof and walks away. Over the next several hours... We search the cabin from top to bottom. I hobble around the ground floor, careful not to look out the window, even when the drumming starts up again at a few points. I check all of the shelves, under the chairs and tables, in the stove, in the pantry, between the cracks in the floor and walls. We don't find anything. At some point, I almost topple over from dozing off, and that's when we call off the search. There's some discussion as to where we should sleep, if we should do it in shifts. Jenna suggests she stay downstairs, she stay up downstairs while the rest of us sleep, just in case something else happens. Carl suggests that I sleep in the bed upstairs because of my leg, and I have to agree with him. Raven stays downstairs with Jenna, making himself comfortable in one of the chairs. 
As Carl hobbles up the stairs with me on his back, Jenna watches us the whole way. I sit on the bed, watching as Carl moves about the room, looking behind shelves and under the bed. Carl, I hate to ask again, but are you okay? Hmm? He looks back at me. Yeah, I'm fine. I just want to make sure everything is safe for you. Thanks. It's just... It's just you... It's just that you seem... Different, I guess. Carl looks at the ceiling, seemingly thinking. It's difficult to make him out in the darkness. Just like when he had a sheet over his head, I get that I get the weird feeling that who I'm looking at might not be Carl. I think it's just that this has made me grow up. I realize how useless I've been. This is sort of an opportunity for me to actually do something. Help people. You know? Yeah. It sounds nice. But I can't get rid of that nagging feeling that something is off. It's in the way he talks. The way he moves. Right down to his facial expressions. I swing my legs gingerly onto the bed and lay back. Carl comes over to sit on the other side. You gonna sleep here too? Yeah. You need me to get around, so I'm gonna be by your side as much as possible. Alright. Thanks. As we lay awkwardly on our backs for a moment, Carl suddenly turns on his side and pulls me into his chest. I'm surprised and turn instinctively so that he's spooning me. I guess it makes sense after our semi-confession back in the mansion. He nuzzles my neck, but again, the action is weirdly unnatural. Even with his big warm body next to mine, it takes me a long time to fall asleep. I open my eyes and blarely I can make out the dark cabin room. My heart sinks again at realizing where I'm at. But it's more subdued this time. I guess I'm getting used to my new life. My mouth is dry. Very dry. I feel like I need to find water or I'm not going back to sleep. I sit up. Carl's moved back to his side of the bed at this point. Lying out on his back. Snoring. Quietly, I get out of the bed. When wincing at how creaky the floorboards are. I make my way down the stairs, eyes adjusting to the point where I can barely make out the ledges. When I reach the ground level, I see that Raven is splayed out on the carpet, snoring as well. I shake my head before moving to the kitchen. Jenna isn't there, and I wonder where she might be at. Was she in that other room upstairs? Maybe I just missed her when I was distracted when by Raven. Looking around, I see a small cup sitting on the table. I'm almost positive it hasn't been there before, but maybe Raven or Jenna had set it there. Walking over to it, I'm relieved to see that it's filled with what looks like water. I pick it up and sniff at it, not really getting a hint of anything. Tentatively, I take a sip and immediately spit it out. It's salty. Putrid. It tastes like... I jump and some of the liquid splashes to the floor. Gingerly, I set down the cup, looking into the opposite room. Everything is still in the other room. I can't even hear Raven snoring anymore. This time I see the wardrobe move, the door specifically. I stare wide-eyed. Everything falls still again. But I don't dare move. Jenna? I whisper loudly. It wouldn't make any sense why she'd be in there. But who else would it be? Ghosts, of course. I'm about to take a step, to step forward toward the stairs, maybe. Or to at least wake up, wake Raven up. But that's when the small door creaks open. 
I freeze, all of the fur on my body standing up. James. Words die on my tongue as something long and black slides out from beneath the door. It dips down toward the ground and only then does it vaguely take the shape of a foot. Another long black tendril follows, slightly ahead of the first one. When it touches the ground, it takes the shape of a hand, resting flat on the wooden floor. I choke and start to try and back away, but then the door explodes open. I'm just barely able to make out a galloping shape before it engulfs me. Com before it engulfs me, I collapse back onto the ground, twisting, trying to scream, but the thing is completely covering and smothering me. I choke and gag. Feel like I'm being suffocated, my arms pinned to my sides, my legs rigid. As I try to yank away from the thing, it feels like something is freed from my mouth and I'm able to scream. Help! Get it off me! Help! Jace! The surface underneath me becomes soft, the thing on top of me warm. Through bleary eyes, I look up at Carl just able to make out the curves of his horns. Carl? I hear movement at the doorway and I glance in the, that direction to find Jenna standing there, hackles raised, teeth bared. Jenna! Before I know what exactly is going on, Jenna sprints across the room and jumps on the bed. Carl doesn't even have time to turn around before she snatches him up by his horns and yanks his head back violently. The ram lets out a choking sound as he's dragged back and thrown to the floor. Jenna jumps off the bed after him. From the sounds of it, she lands on him. What follows is a series of thuds and smacks. Weakly, I pull myself to the foot of the bed, still completely disor disoriented. disorientated. I knew it was you! I only get her voice. I knew it was you, you motherfucking piece of shit! What I see... What I see is Jenna sitting on Carl's back, swinging her fists into his head while the ram tries to cover up. You haven't changed at all! Jenna, stop! I roll... Off. <laughs> I think I meant off. I roll off the bed, confused as to why I'm so weak. Pain shoots up my leg again, but this time I barely notice it. There's something around Jenna, something big and black, like a shadow, making her look much bigger than she actually is. Her fists swing and hit Carl with a force I didn't think she was capable of. Then she grabs Carl by the horns again and yanks back before slamming his face back into the floor. Jenna! I lunge forward, trying to put myself between the two of them. Under, underneath me, Carl has gone limp. Just like Jenna, there's something black and shadowy around him as well, but it's fading, moving away. Jenna's still trying to get at Carl, reaching around me and snarling in my ear, a sound that makes my fur stand on end. Then she's gone. I look to my left and see Jenna being drawn back by Raven, his eyes wide with shock. What are you doing?! Jenna struggles in the husky's grip or grasp. I saw him. He was trying to fuck the otter. The otter? Jenna, stop. He was helping me. Raven continues to try and pull Jenna. I say Jenna. Raven continues to try and pull Jenna towards the door, but she continues to struggle. I was having a nightmare. Jenna struggling loose loses some of its vigor, but she still cont continues to snarl in Carl's direction. Raven, please get her out of here. The shadow around Jenna seems to shrink and her face shows some doubt as she stares at the crumpled form of Carl. After a moment, she seems to let the husky lead her from the room and I hear s soothing tones from Raven as he leads her downstairs. I turn back to Carl, who has his arms around his head, 
face still buried in the ground. After a while, I see his shoulders heaving with sobs. Gently, I pull one of his arms back and he looks up at me. This time, I recognize his face. I sit next to Carl on the bed, mopping up his face with his bloodied button-up shirt. He sits there, silently, looking at his hands while I work. At least nothing's broken. Dude, what happened? I'm not sh sure if he's talking about what happened with Jenna or just everything. I've been asking that same question since we got here. He looks at his hands again. I felt... I felt different. I sit back and look him over, satisfied with having cleaned up most of his face. You were acting different too. Like, I felt like I knew everything. I knew what I was doing. You were acting really confident. I agree and set his bloody shirt off to the side. When I look back at him, he seems so sad and beaten down that I have to hug him. Dude, you're gonna make me start crying again. His voice cracks, but he hugs me back anyway. I'm just glad you're back. I felt like I was talking to a stranger. Carl leans against me and sighs. I don't know if I'm glad, though. It's like it just came down from a huge high. I rub his shoulders for a while before I venture f forward with my guess. Was it James? I... I don't know. Maybe. Carl looks at his hands again, like he's questioning if they're even his. I just felt like I knew what I wanted. And when things didn't go the way I thought they would, I'd get really pissed. He's silent for a while. I imagine contemplating what he'd just gone through. Jenna isn't lighting, acting like herself either. Carl looks up at that. Yeah, I felt like whatever was in me, whatever, whatever it is, really hates what Jenna is doing for some reason. Carl looks around at the room, scanning it with his dark green eyes. I feel like all of this is some kind of mental fight between James and whatever else is fighting against him. He looks back down at his hands. That's why we have to do all this. He falls back into silence and I don't ask any more questions, wanting to let him rest a bit. There is one nagging thought that comes to my mind, though. This is kind of stupid, but what happened back in the mansion, you know, that thing between us? He looks up at me and I feel my face flush, looking away. I guess I'm wondering if any of that was real. I mean, if it was really you feeling that way. Carl doesn't say anything, so I'm forced to look up at him. When I do, he has a sad sort of smile on his face. Dude, I think that was the only part of me that was real. Despite where we are, despite everything that's happening, that somehow makes me incredibly happy. Happy enough to lean forward and kiss him. He kisses me back, and while it's barely more than a peck, it has my entire body feeling warm. He puts his own arm around me after I pull back, and I rest my head on his shoulder. I feel like it's gonna come back, though. I look at him. What, James? Whatever it is, I can already feel it, like it's on the edge of my mind. Do you think you can fight it? Carl sighs and looks at me. Should I? What do you mean? I mean, it made me feel amazing. Like I could do anything. Maybe we need that. 
I frown. I don't know. Not only that, I felt like I knew what to do. It might save us. He stares back into my eyes. I know it's not really me. But it will probably be... But it will probably only be for the time that I'm here, that we're here. I look away, thinking. Then I'll be back to my old self. He squeezes my shoulder. But it's important to me what you think. We're in this together. I'm gonna tell him to fight it. Be your true self, bro. No. Whatever or not it made whether or not it made Carl feel good, I can't shake the bad feeling it gives me. I rest a hand on his. No. After everything that's happened, I don't trust whatever it is. Carl watches me closely. Seriously, we need to be more careful. Besides, I lean my head against his shoulder again. We are in this together. We don't need that thing meddling with us to get through it. I feel some sort of the... I still... I feel some of the tension go out of Carl's mus muscles and we wrap each other more tightly into our respective embraces. We sit there for a while, Carl absorb absorbing what I just said. It's clear that whatever is influencing Carl and probably Jenna is powerful, and we had to be careful. Whatever he decides, I just pray it's the right decision. And that's where I'm going to leave it for this episode of Echo. So we have more, hopefully, in the very near future. Thanks for watching or listening, and or listening, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye.